The Parker Solar Probe created history by becoming the first spacecraft to touch the sun. It passed through the sun's upper atmosphere, known as the corona. Temperatures in the solar corona can soar up to a million degrees Celsius. It's the hottest region of the solar atmosphere and is about 15 times hotter than the surface of the sun. But the critical question is, why didn't the Parker Solar Probe melt when it touched the sun? So in this video, we are going to talk about the spacecraft touched the sun, but why it's not melting. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Parker entered the corona three times on April 28, at one point for five hours, and sampled particles and magnetic fields. Findings from the event were published in physical review letters. The cup got so hot, it glowed red-orange like a fireplace poker at 1,800 degrees, said Anthony Case, the center's instrument scientist. That's a temperature on par with volcanic lava but it never reached the millions of degrees of its environment. The key here is understanding the difference between temperature and heat, Case said. Temperature measures how fast particles are moving, while heat is the amount of energy they transfer. A 100 degree day feels hot on people's skin because lots of molecules in the air are quickly hitting their bodies, transferring heat. The corona through which Parker Solar Probe flies, for example, has an extremely high temperature but very low density, NASA's Susanna Darling explained. Think of the difference between putting your hand in a hot oven versus putting it in a pot of boiling water. Don't try this at home. In the oven, your hand can withstand significantly hotter temperatures for longer than in the water, where it has to interact with many more particles. Similarly, compared to the visible surface of the sun, the corona is less dense, so the spacecraft interacts with fewer hot particles and doesn't receive as much heat. That means the heat shield, which protects most of the instruments on board the probe, will only be heated to about 1,644 degrees Kelvin, 1,370 steg, or 2,500 fdeg. The sun-facing side is painted brilliant white in ceramic paint to deflect as much of the sun's light as possible. It's about 2.4 meters, 8 feet, in diameter. The shield weighs just 72.5 kilograms, 160 pounds, because of the lightness of the foam. Carbon is amazing. Because of its four valence electrons, it tends to form strong covalent bonds with other carbon atoms, allowing long, stable chains to form. Before we move on, support us by hitting subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Now, let's get back to our topic. This is why it's the basis of life on Earth, and it's why the space industry and many other cutting-edge industries love it. NASA has been using something called reinforced carbon-carbon for years, most notably on the nose cone of the space shuttle, and now the heat shield of the Parker Solar Probe. This substance is made of tiny carbon filaments, chains of carbon atoms, suspended in a matrix of graphite, a crystalline form of carbon. This unique composite has a low thermal expansion, meaning it can retain its properties in high temperatures, can withstand up to 700 MPa, making it five times stronger than steel, has low thermal conductivity so it doesn't transfer heat quickly, is an excellent shine of electromagnetic radiation, and has a low weight, with a density somewhere between 1.6 to 1.98 grams per cubic centimeter. NASA is also making use of advanced artificial intelligence to orient the Parker Solar Probe so that the heat shield is always protecting the probe. Behind the heat shield are solar sensors. If these get illuminated, the AI system is able to understand the current position of the probe, its optimal position, and how to correct it. NASA engineers are unable to interact with the probe in real time, as the sun is roughly eight light minutes away. Another challenge came in the form of the electronic wiring. Most cables would melt from exposure to heat radiation at such close proximity to the sun. To solve this problem, the team grew sapphire crystal tubes to suspend the wiring and made the wires from niobium. To make sure the instrument was ready for the harsh environment, the researchers needed to mimic the sun's intense heat radiation in a lab. To create a test-worthy level of heat, the researchers used a particle accelerator and IMAX projectors, jury-rate to increase their temperature. The projectors mimicked the heat of the sun, 
while the particle accelerator exposed the cup to radiation to make sure the cup could measure the accelerated particles under intense conditions. To be absolutely sure the solar probe cup would withstand the harsh environment, the Odello Solar Furnace, which concentrates the heat of the sun through 10,000 adjustable mirrors, was used to test the cup against the intense solar emission. The solar probe cup passed its tests with flying colors. Indeed, it continued to perform better and give clearer results the longer it was exposed to the test environments. We think the radiation removed any potential contamination. Justin Casper, principal investigator for the SWAP Instruments at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, said, It basically cleaned itself. The closer you get to the sun, the more protection you'll require. As the solar panels that power the spacecraft get closer to the sun, they might get overheated. The panels are protected by a simple cooling system that has a heated tank, two radiators that will keep the coolant from freezing, aluminum fins that increase the cooling surface, and pumps. This cooling system may keep solar panels and other equipment cold and operational, and it is strong enough to cool an average-sized living room. The cooling system uses around a gallon, 3.7 liters, of deionized water as a coolant for the system. Temperatures on the spacecraft range from 50 F, 10 C, to 257 F, 125 C. Few liquids are capable of operating at such a wide temperature range. As a precaution, the water will be pressurized in order to increase its boiling point to over 257 F, 125 C. I want to go the rest of the way into Disney World, and I want to go meet Mickey Mouse. Michael Stevens, an astrophysicist who helps monitor the cup, said, We really were just on the doorstep of it. The Parker Solar Probe is a compact spacecraft with a mass of approximately 685 kilograms, 1,510 ohms, and a length of 3.1 meters, 10.1 feet. Its design is optimized for its mission to study the sun's corona up close and withstand the extreme conditions it will encounter. The spacecraft is powered by two solar arrays, which provide up to 685 watts of power at a distance of 0.25 astronomical units, AU, from the sun. As the spacecraft approaches the sun, it will use a sun shield to protect its instruments from intense heat and radiation. The Parker Solar Probe is also equipped with a suite of scientific instruments, which are designed to study the sun's corona and solar wind in detail. These instruments include the FIELDES instrument suite, which measures electric and magnetic fields in the solar wind and corona. The WISPR instrument captures images of the solar corona and solar wind. The SWAP instrument suite measures the properties of the solar wind, including its density, temperature, and velocity. The ISOIS instrument suite measures the composition of energetic particles in the solar wind. The HIRA instrument measures the properties of high-energy particles in solar wind. Likewise, the field's instrument suite can't bask in the shadow of the heat shield. Four of its five antennas stick out past the heat shield to measure the sun's complicated electric fields, while the fifth is perpendicular to the others to create a 3D image. These are made out of a niobium alloy, with a melting point well above that needed to survive. With missions scheduled out to 2025, the Parker Solar Probe is set to complete 25 passes through the sun. Let's hope NASA designed it well enough to survive all of them and fulfill its purpose of delving into the sun's many mysteries. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you liked this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.